as we come before the Lord, just thinking about his goodness, his mercy, his strength, his peace, which surpasses all understanding, guards our hearts and minds. No matter what you've been going through, God has been right beside you, in front of you, behind you. The Bible says that he hems us in. I don't know how he does it. Hallelujah. So let us just get quiet before the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I don't know how we do it, how you do it, Lord. Bring us here week after week. Things that we thought were out of control when we woke up this morning, we were in our right mind. Your peace. Is guarding the things that we can't control. Lord, we just surrender them to you. We don't understand it, God. I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin upon the cross. I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin on the cross. But here we are. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am. Say that you're my God, you're all together perfect, all together perfect, all together wonderful to me. But I'll never know, I'll never know how much. To see my sin upon a cross, I will never know how much it costs to see my sin upon a cross. Well, here we are, saints. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together worthy. All together holy. All together wonderful to God, we thank you this morning. We thank you for being our God. We thank you for being our Redeemer. We thank you for saving our souls. We thank you for being the captain of the hosts, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We thank you for being our righteousness, Lord. We thank you for providing everything that we need. And we come in here today just to glorify you and lift up the mighty name of Jesus. 
We come, God, because you've protected us, you've guided us, you've kept us in sickness, Lord God. You've healed us, Lord God. When we didn't have an answer, Lord God, you were the answer. When we needed a lawyer, when we needed a doctor, Lord God, you stepped in, Lord God. You assisted and you provided, Lord God. So we just want to give you the praise today, Lord God. We lift up the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we ask, Lord God, that everything we do today will be done in a decent and orderly manner. That you bless your manservant, the pastor, Lord God, as he brings forth the word that we will worship you in spirit and in truth. We claim victory in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen, amen, and amen. You may be seated. We'll have our responsive reading by Sister Dorothy Dix. Good morning, Ebenezer. Good morning. And I understand what mainly means by giving respect to God's word. So could we all just stand and, and well, we do God's word this morning. And the responsive reading this morning comes from Acts, the second chapter, the first, the first the second chapter, first to seventh verse, the tenth chapter, the forty first to forty eighth verse, and it's the New King James Version, and it's the coming of the Holy Spirit. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven, as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. And they were dwelling in Jerusalem, Jews, devout men from every nation. And when the sound occurred, the multitude came together and were confused because everyone heard them speak in his own language. And then they were all amazed and marveled, saying to one another, Look, I'm not all these who speak Galilean. When Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell, on, fell upon all those who heard the word. And those of the circumcision who believed were astonished. As he and his came with Peter, because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles also. For they all for they heard them speak with tongues and magnified God. Then Peter answered, Can anyone forbid water that he should not be baptized, who has seen the Holy Spirit just as we have? And let us all together say, and, and he, he commanded, commanded them, them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then they asked him to stay a few days. days. Thank you for the reading of God's word. May he add a blessing to it.
see how you do it, Lord. Every Sunday, Lord, back to back, 8 a.m. services, Lord, 11 a.m. services, Lord, you keep on making a way, Lord. And we thank you so much, God, for just your provisions, Lord. Lord, we know that life gets tough at times, but we thank you for your grace, Lord. We just give you praise, God. We ask you, Lord, to please, Lord, just bless these funds, Lord, for the building of your kingdom, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Please stand and follow the ushers.
singing Mary. Tell Martha not to mourn. Tell Martha not to mourn. Mary. Tell Martha not to mourn. Tell Martha not to mourn. Pharaoh's army. Got drowned in the sea one day. Mm -hmm. Say, Mary. Tell Martha not to mourn. Tell Martha not to mourn. If I could, if I could, I surely would now. Surely would stand on the rock. Just like Moses stood. Moses stood. I said, Pharaoh's army. Pharaoh's army. Got drowned in the sea. Drowned in the red sea. I have to say, Mary. Say, Mary, oh, Mary, don't you weep. One for the Father. Say, Mary, oh, Mary, don't you weep. And one for the Son. Oh, Mary, don't you weep. One more for the Holy Ghost. Oh, Mary, don't you weep. Tell Martha. Not to mourn. Tell Martha not to go. Mary. Oh, Mary, don't you weep. Tell Martha not to mourn. Tell Martha not to go. Mm, say, Mary. Oh, Mary, don't you weep. Tell Martha. Not the moon. Tell Martha not to moan. Pharaoh's army. Pharaoh's army. Got drowned in the sea. Drowned in the red sea. I have to say, Mary. Martha, not to mourn. Tell Martha not to mourn. Are you excited about Jesus today? Amen. We thank God that God is a God of resurrection. He's able to deliver us. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you so much for who you are, for allowing your presence to be here with us today. Lord, thank you that you're able to touch us in so many various ways, Lord. But most importantly, we thank you for being our deliverer. Father, I pray for maybe there's someone that's here today that doesn't know you, doesn't understand, God, why we don't have to weep, doesn't understand how you've brought us out of so many dangerous situations. So Lord, would you help them today to have a relationship with you? that they will confess with their mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in their heart that, Father, you have raised them from the dead and you said they would be saved. Let them know it's by grace through faith and not of themselves. It's a gift from you. Help them to receive that gift today. Now, Lord, I thank you for forgiveness of my sins and cleansing me of all unrighteousness. Therefore, Holy Spirit, I welcome you. You have never failed. Would you teach us and guide us and lead us into all truth? Please make this word so plain 
so easy to be understood that even a small child can be transformed to be like you. We just give you praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. You ready for God's word this morning? Go ahead to Acts chapter 12. And I want you to focus in on that seventh verse. We have been dealing with the early church, and James has just been beheaded. God allowed that to happen. And uh, one of the second martyrs of the church, and now Peter has been taken into prison, and today we're going to uh, deal with some strange things. This is one of, the, um, one of the exciting points within the New Testament church to see how God uh, can work within our lives. And Acts 12 and 7 says, Now behold, an angel of the Lord stood by him, and a light shone in the prison, and he struck Peter on the side, and raised him up, saying, Arise quickly, and his chains fell off his hands. I want to speak from a title uh, this morning, Angels Watching Over Me. Angels Watching Over Me. Now, I must tell you today, this is uh, not really a study into angelology, uh, we are uh, not planning to go real deep into this, but it is exciting to know that God does have angels all around us. Uh, I want all of you to think about miracle times in your life. Think about things that have occurred in your life that you just could not explain. I've told you uh, this morning getting up, and I, I, I thought about the situation that I preached on uh, numerous times. I remember a time my mom was... Uh, driving my sister and myself. We were coming from Jones's Crossroad Missionary Baptist Church. It was during this season. Um, the roads had iced up, and I believe we were coming from a choir rehearsal of a type, and uh, we had almost got to Highway 29, and we went into a curve, and there, Mom hit a slick spot. Um, she, uh, at that point, didn't know what to do. The car was out of control, and uh, it's kind of humorous now, but it wasn't then. Uh, she reached over and grabbed my sister, and left me all by myself. <laughs> now that was that was in a time you didn't wear seat belts. You just uh, your child could uh, climb all over the dashboard, and you know you could uh, put them in the back corner. And she reached over and grabbed her. And I remember that car spinning, uh, and there was a, 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 a trenchment on the side of it. And I just knew we were going to go over. And we all closed our eyes. But my mama said something. She said, "Jesus." In the midst of that request going up, the car kept spinning. And when it was all said and done, it had went to one side of the road, came back on the right side of the road. And when we opened our eyes, we were going in the right direction. You may say, Pastor, your mom was just a good driver. No, she took her hands off the wheel. And, and I, I believe today that angels are truly watching over all of us. Oh, last time, going through that uh, chapter of Acts 12, uh, we were in Acts 12 and 5. Peter was therefore kept in prison, but constant prayer was offered to God for him by the church. And we dealt with a praying church. Uh, points in review to help us to transition to where we are today. The enemy will come. Anybody know that? He's going to come. Uh, God is still in charge. The enemy never gives up. Uh, and you never give up. And God can turn it around. No matter what situation that you're going through, God is able to turn it around. Time frame, we're back into 80, 35 to 48. Uh, the church has been growing, and because of that, persecution has come upon it. As said before, James has been beheaded, and now Peter is in prison. And the, the church is praying. They're seeking God for intervention in this situation. But please understand, don't put God in a box. God can work whatever way he wants to work, but you've got to know that it's not our will, but it's God's will to be done. Acts 12 and 6. And when Herod was about to bring him out that night, Peter was sleeping, bound with two chains between two soldiers, and the guards before the door were keeping the prison. Here's our first point of the day. Sleeping in the storm. Sleeping in the storm. Now, this is important to the note. Herod is getting ready to have Peter beheaded. And so that night goes through, and they would start off early within this uh, time that they would kill 
uh, this person, Peter, that would be in the prison. And so as they were starting out, God had already preempted what was going to occur. Notice within the scripture, um, Peter is actually sleeping. Now, this is amazing to me when you think about it. He's getting ready to be beheaded. He's getting ready to lose his life, but yet he's able to sleep. The apostle was guarded by 16 soldiers in four squads of four soldiers each. They wanted to make sure, Herod wanted to make sure that Peter could not escape, nor could the church get in to get him. Jameis is in falsehood, he writes, Roman prisoners had a chain fastened at one end of the wrist of their right hand and at the other to the wrist of the soldier's left hand, leaving the right arm of the keeper free in case of any attempt to escape. For greater security, the prisoner was sometimes, as here, chained to two soldiers, one on each side. Now, this is important to indicate. I, I brought some chains today. Um, I was going to put um, Brown in chains. Can you, can you get up here today, please? <laughs> Just turn around look at him. Uh, this is important because um, I can't get around your neck. I'm sorry. Um, they would have had Peter... Uh, in chains. He would have been shackled to his neck. And also, they would have had his hands, if you just hold that. They would have had both hands. Your hands too big. (laughs) And Peter would have been locked down. But to add to insult, he's not just chained like this, but there's another chain going to soldiers on both sides. He would have been chained to the left hand of a soldier, and on the other side, he'd been chained to the other hand of the soldier, so that no matter what he did, he could not get away. Herod wanted to make sure that Peter could not get out of jail. You can take your seat. Please understand that you may be in some situations right now where the enemy thinks he's got you. you you've got a bad diagnosis. Uh, You've got a wayward child. You've got some stuff that's going on emotionally, and you feel like you can't get out. But I'm telling you, there are angels watching over you. I found out God, and and maybe there's some witness in the house. uh, God is he's able to wait to the last minute. Right. It seems like the last minute, but he's already planned it out. He's able. Everything is jacked up in our lives. Everything has fallen apart. We have no hope. There are no more Hail Marys, nothing. And then God said, well, I guess I'll show up. Anybody ever been at that point? Notice uh, Peter, he's he's asleep. How, How can you sleep when you got Uh, Two soldiers on the side of you, you're chained by the neck, you're chained by the arm, you're in a cold prison cell, and you're just hours away from dying. Philippians 4, 6, and 7, and I I believe that he had this on the inside of them, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and mind through Christ Jesus. This is what happens when we learn how to pray. And when we're praying, we learn when we pray is no need of worrying. Anybody know that if you prayed and you've given it to the Lord, ain't no need of worrying about it because God is going to work it out. No matter how hard we try to worry in our anxious, we can't change the situation. But we do know a God who can change the situation. We do know a God that can intervene on our behalf. Remember Jesus. He was in a ship and the storm was raging around him, Mark 4, 38, but he was in the stern asleep on a pillow. And they awoke him and said to him, teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, peace be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. Jesus taught us that even in the midst of our worst storms, we can rest. Some of you are not getting your proper rest because you're stressed out. Some of you last night, you tossed and, and you, you, you toil simply because you're worrying about stuff you're trying to fix. And, and what concerns me, it happens in my life. Sometimes I worry about stuff that don't even mean anything. You ever had a challenge that you were trying to work out? It wasn't life changing or anything, but you thought about it all night long. But I'm telling you, even in the midst of our worst troubles, God is there with us. David writes in Psalms 127 and 2, it is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows. 
for so he gives his beloved seed. When you are in God's will, you can find rest all the time. When you're doing what God wants you to do, you can lay down and you can rest and you know that God can give you peace that goes beyond all understanding. Look at Acts 12 and 7. Now behold, an angel of the Lord stood by him and a light shone in the prison and he struck Peter on the side and raised him up saying, arise quickly. And his chains fell off his hands. Here's another point. He was there all the time. I want you to get that. He was there all the time. Now, now this is critical as we we look at the scriptures here. It says, now behold, an angel of the Lord stood by him. Now, he's, he's shackled. He's shackled. He's got two soldiers on both sides of him, but somehow the angel gets there and they don't see him. So much so that, that Peter is in such deep sleep. Look at the scripture. The context says that uh, the, the angel had to strike him, had to wake him up. Peter does not know. He's prayed. He's left it in the hands of the Lord. And then it says that the angel brings light and it's shown within the prison. Now, I, I, we, we've got some angels that we've set up here in Ebenezer from time to time. You'll see them in the back. But please understand the scriptures bring out different views of angels. Now, some of them uh, we see here look female. Others within the scripture are more male oriented. But whatever they are, we find out something. J.B. Phillips translates Hebrews 1.14 to give us insight on the purpose of angels to those who are saved. Listen to this. It says, surely the angels are no more than spirits in the service of God commissioned to serve the heirs of God's salvation. That, that, that lets me know that all of us who are saved here, all of us who have called by the name of Jesus, we have angels that are all around us. Amen. That should make you excited today. Because there is another world that's going on that we cannot see. Did you know that even this morning there were angels around you? Did you know that there are angels in this place? You say, Pastor, uh, that, that's extreme, don't you think? No, because I prayed God and I, I, I prayed to him and I asked him for fence around Ebenezer. And I, I believe that fence is an intervention and he allows angels. I, I, I want the angels to be covered in this area so much that if you're going through situations, you pull close to the, the, the land and all of a sudden you feel peace come in and, and, and you don't know why you feel peace, but but there are angels all around. I I want the angels to be built up so much that even the devil, when he wants to come in like a flood, but when you get to a certain area, because there's so much angels around us, that all of a sudden your worst issues, your worst troubles are pushed back because God has sent his ministering spirits around us. I'm telling you, there ought to be some shouts in the house to know that there are angels watching over me. Did you know that the enemy wanted you to have a head-on collision this morning? Yes, he did. He did. But God sent his angels to circumvent some issues. The enemy wanted you out today. He did not want you to make it to this eight o'clock service. But I'm so glad that God has sent some ministering spirits all around us. Acts 12 and 8. Then the angel said to him, gird yourself and tie on your sandals. And so he did. And he said to him, Put on your garment and follow me. Here's another point. The way of escape. The way of escape. Now, now this angel, he has to knock Peter because he's so asleep. Uh, There's something else about Peter. We we can tell that he has uh, immense peace on the inside of him. Peter has peace simply because he's already, he's taken off his sandals. Look at the scripture. Uh, His sandals have been put on. Now he's chained up. He's got these soldiers. You would think you're getting ready to get beheaded. You would keep your shoes on just because. But Peter said, well, you know what? This this may as well be a good night's rest. I don't know what God is going to do, but if he don't deliver me, that's okay. But I know it can. So Peter has taken off his shoes. He's made himself comfortable. And the angel said, you got to get dressed now. I'm going to show you a way of escape. And in our lives, we've got to make sure that that we're always listening to the voice of the Lord. And God sends his angel to give him a physical escape from his prison. But some of us have spiritual battles that we need to find our way out of. 
Some of you are dealing with stuff right now that you are trapped. There's a prison in your mind. There's a prison in your situation. You don't know how to move out of it, but I want you to know there is a way of escape. 1 Corinthians 10, 13 gives us such good news. It said, no temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. Angels watching over me. Isn't that good to know that no matter what situation you're going through, God always has a way of escape. He has angels surrounding us, and all we have to do is just listen to the voice of the Lord. Acts 12, 9. So he went out and followed him and did not know that was what was done by the angel was real, but thought he was seeing a vision. Here's another point. More than a dream. More than a dream. Peter was in such deep sleep. He's hit. He's struck on the side. And, and if you've ever had one of those vivid dreams, it just seems like it's real. I've, I've, I've had some vivid dreams and it seems like I was there. I was there. I was trying to work it out and I would wake up. It was a good dream and I would be mad because I didn't finish my dream. Anybody ever had that? Because it, it felt so real. And, and some of the, the most real ones, you wake up and, and you, can, you can remember the details of it. You, you can sense, you can feel all those emotions of that dream. And so Peter, at this point, he feels like this is just a vision. This is just a thought of his mind, but please understand it's real. And some of you don't understand the things that you're dreaming right now. God is making them real in your life. That Some of you don't realize it. And if you would just think back, the life that you're living right now, it used to be a dream to you, but God has made it a reality. Some of you, some of you, I, I was talking to our uh, senior saints and, 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 and we were uh, in our uh, noonday Bible study. We were pulling together and they were telling me in their generation, we've had 84 years old and 82 year olds. And they said that they, they grew up at a time that they did not have electricity. And some of them said that they did not have running water. Some of them said that they could look up through the roof and they could see the sky because the rain water would come through. And you think about where you are now, where you can walk and you can flip a switch and, and the lights will come on and you, you can go over to a speaker. That's what they say in the old days and turn the water and the water come out and we can't give God praise. There should have been a few of you that grew up in times. I'm talking about angels watching over there. This morning when you got up and you turned on your light switch, you should have got Pentecostal right then. When you went to the shower and you were able to turn on the water and the water came out not cold, but it came out hot. Some of you should have shouted right there because God has made your dream a reality. Angels watching over me. No, notice in this more than a dream. He said he did not know that what was done by the angel was real. But he thought he was in a vision. Has God ever done something amazing in your life that you thought you were dreaming? But some of us have taken it for granted. The fact that you woke up this morning. You could have had a stroke or a heart attack, but you hear in the eight o'clock service. The, the fact that God kept you from a head on accident is said before. All of these things we take for granted, but God has been working on our behalf. Yeah. Look at Acts 12 10. When they were past the first and the second guard post, they came to the iron gate that leads to the city, which opened to them of its own accord. And they went out. And went down one street, and immediately the angel departed from him. Here's another point. God will open doors. Anybody know that he will? God will open doors. I I, I love this scripture here because I I want to show you something. And so uh, Peter doesn't understand the realness of it, but but it is real. The angel is directing him, giving him escape. And I want you to see something in scripture. It said that they, they go past the first guard. Remember, I told you he's surrounded by guards on side of him, but also they have guards that are around the prison. I, I've had to go to the prison to visit others, and, and it's a, uh, it, 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 it messes me up on the inside. I, I went to deep prison before, the, the one with maximum security, and, and I, I was all messed up. I was concerned that they weren't going to let me back out because there were so many. I would go past one guard, and I would hear that door go. And then I would go past another guard, and I'd hear that door go. 
and deep within the prison. And I would be there and I'd be talking to the prisoner. But I was thinking, I got to get out of here. I can't talk too long because I don't want them to forget that I had a ticket in. I want my ticket to be stepped to get out also. But notice Peter at this point, as he gets past the first second, the first guard and the second guard post, they came to the iron gate. And so all that is separating him from his freedom is this iron gate that leads to the city. But notice this. When they get to the iron gate, it opens up on his own accord. I, I tell you, I, I, I love the, uh, the, 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 the things that God has put in our life in this day and time. Uh, we can uh, do our garage door open and we can hit this button and it comes up. Some of you got the bougie cars that you don't even have to touch anything. You come up to your house and all of a sudden it just up and you you walk into your house and your lights come on automatically all of that but please understand uh, God already did this God already had automatic openers before technology could even advance to get us to the point Peter comes up to the gate and because he's in God's will because he's doing what God wants him to do all of a sudden doors have opened there ought to be some shouts in the house to say God has opened up some I, I, I'll shout about myself today God has opened up some stuff for me he put me in some places I thought I'd never be He's allowed me to get some things that I thought I'd never be able to get. I got to the point that all of a sudden the door just opened up. Are there any saints in the house that say, yeah, I've been there, Pastor? I didn't think I was going to get through it, but I got close to it. I said I was down for the last count, but all of a sudden it just opened up to me. God will open doors. He opens up and it says he, on one accord, and he goes to the street and immediately the angels departed from him. Please, as we stop here today, I, I want to come back on next Sunday, and I'm, I'm going to finish this chapter, but I want to give you some information. Please don't take for granted the angels that you have. Uh, one of my favorite uh, singers, Richard Smallwood, he arranged this powerful song. He says, through dangers seen and unseen, there's protection all around. Under the refuge of God's wings, security is found. For there are angels watching to keep you in all of your ways, keeping you from stumbling, so don't be afraid. God's appointed angels watching over me, angels watching over me. Unseen hands guiding me through my storm and through my rain. Healing hands holding me through the darkness of my pain. Wings of love encamped around me so I will not fear. For I can feel their presence hovering near. Nothing but angels watching over me. Angels watching over me all night. All day, angels watching over me, my Lord. But I'm thankful for angels watching over me. But I'm exhilarated that God would send his son Jesus to die for me. Are there any saints in the house that say, yeah, I, I thank God for the angels that are around me. But, but I get plumb excited to think about Jesus coming from heaven to earth, walking among men, healing the sick and raising the dead. I, I get excited about a Christ coming to the end of his life and at Lazarus' tomb saying, Lazarus, get up. And after four days, Lazarus got up and walked away from death. But, but I get real excited to know that my Jesus didn't stop right there. But he goes to a cross called Calvary, nails in his hands and nails in his feet. There he carries my sins and bears my grief. He dies on the cross of Calvary. I'm talking angels around me, but I'm so glad that Jesus is around me. He dies on the cross of Calvary. But early Sunday morning, three days later, he gets up. Any excited folks in the house? He got up. Come on to your feet. There are angels watching over me. Saints of God, sometimes we take the intervention of God for granted. Say that over and over again because think how many times in our day angels come in on our behalf. How many times the enemy wanted to take us out but God says, no, no. I don't know about you, but I know I've got many angels around me. The enemy does not like the calling on our lives. But I'm so glad God is ordering our steps. When I was in the military, 
just to come home and visit my wife on the weekend. And I remember it was a crazy time. I would get off on Friday and wouldn't sleep. I would drive about three and a half hours and get home and want to spend all the time with my, my wife. And literally, I would stay up Saturday and I would stay up Sunday and had to be back on the base at 7 a.m. on Sunday morning. So I would get back in the car, head and slept and would make my way. I would wait to the last minute. That was, that was when I was really in love. I talked to this guy. That was, I'm still in love. But I was, I was crazy in love. I just... I just, I just, I needed to be like all the time. I just wanted to be all up under and, and holding hands and everything. And I just wouldn't sleep. And I would get back in the car and, and I would make my way. And I would wait to the last minute. It, it was supposed to take me four hours, but I had figured it out. If I drove fast enough, Brown, I could get, I could get back to Sumter, South Carolina in about three hours. I, I, I could do it. And, and I, I, was, I was rolling. But the sleep was right. It was just heavy. And I, I remember I looked at my time and had about an hour and a half to go. And I, I blanked out. Blanked out. When I came to myself, I had pulled over and I was parked in a dealership with cars. And I had parked my car in there. And and I thought about, I had gone like an hour and couldn't remember. I couldn't remember. If you, if you ever went to South Carolina, I go the back way, there are curves, there are all kinds of things. I couldn't remember an hour of my trip. How do you account that? I, there were angels around me. I, that night... Angel had to get in the car and said, this, this, he's a fool. He's crazy. And the devil said, devil said, you know what? I don't want him to get to Ebenezer. I don't want him to have a family, five kids. I don't want people to get delivered and set free. I don't want anything. We want to kill him tonight. But God said, oh, no. Oh, no, not, not today. Angels. We're going to ask our ministers to come forth, our intercessors, and Minister Brown, if he'd come forth and give us the altar call. I want you to examine your life. I want you to see how gracious God has been. Don't take that for granted. This could be your last day. We just don't know. But I'm going to give God the praise for all the wonderful things that he's done for me. Church, truly there are angels watching over all of us this morning. Just know that you're in God's care and you have nothing to be afraid of. He even watched over us all night long. He kept us in his care. There may be somebody here after listening to this dynamic message this morning. Angels watching over me. You may be in search for a church home. You in the right place at the right time. You may need prayer this morning for whatever reason that may be. Just step out of your seat and come to the altar Deacons, ministers, and prayer warders are here waiting on you. So at this time, you can come to step out. There may be a family member that's sick, and you want to come and pray for and ask for prayer on their behalf. You can come. You may have a neighbor that's going through. Come. Whatever the reason is, God know about it. He's waiting on you. You even may want your home to get stronger in faith. 
bring it to the altar this morning. Cast all your cares on him. Surely he knows it all. The angels are watching over you. Let us pray. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound. That saved a rest like me. I once was lost. But now that I'm found. Blind, but now I see. Father, we thank you this morning for your grace and your mercy. We thank you, God, for touching us with the finger of love. Thank you, Father, for continuing to captivate our mind soul in our bodies God you woke us up early this morning Father you woke us up right on time thank you for your angels watching over us all night long God you you've been a doctor in a sick room Father this morning you been a lawyer in a courtroom. But most of all, God, you've been our Father. Through the storms and the rain, you kept us one more day. And God, we say thank you. God, you know what the ones that come to the altar this morning, you know what they need more than we can stand here and ask. Supply them of their ever needs. Let them know you sit high, but you still sit down low. God, keep them in your divine care. Bless Ebenezer continually as a whole. Bless the visitors that come time after time then bless us all together as one and in my closing God I want to say thank you for all that you have done I ask that you today God this continue to shower down on the man of God of this over this flock continue God just to Give Pastor Wood strength to get through another day. It's all in your son, Jesus the Christ, we pray. Let the redeemed say amen. amen. Say amen again. Amen. Now come on, give God a big hand of praise. He's worthy. Oh, I dare you to put your hands together. He's worthy. You love Jesus today? He is worthy. As we're still praying and just interceding for those at the altar, I want you to know some things that are coming up this week. We will not have a prayer and Bible study here on Wednesday. We'll be over at United Institutional. We'll be starting out our Lent season uh, where we are in remembrance of what Christ did for us. Uh, time of mourning and introspection. So United Institutional at 7 o'clock this Wednesday, we'll be over there to fellowship with the other churches. And throughout this season, uh, we'll be at various churches. We'll still have our Bible study here unless uh, otherwise uh, announced. But please be aware of that. This Wednesday, United Institutional will be there. Also, we just want to thank God for our ushers, our media staff, uh, those that are in the back, all that they do our musicians and our senior choir. I'm always excited. Our senior choir uh, presses their way out uh, here on our fourth Sunday to just sing praises unto the Lord. There is no sound like our senior choir. They, they have that sound that you know that they've gone through the fire and what they sing about is real to them. So we thank you, senior choir, uh, so much. All our ministers here, thank you, thank you for all you do. And all of you that have made this 8 o'clock service possible, 
I, I'm just amazed at you, and I know it's just God waking you up. It was like 32 degrees this morning. I looked out there, I said, it looked cold out there. And I got here a, a little early, and I was like, well, not a whole bunch of folks, but y'all came in. Y'all was a little cold and late, but y'all made it here. So I commend you all. Thank you so much for just listening to the voice of the Lord and pressing your way. Sing your choir if you give us a closing selection at this time. Every day. Every day. God's been so good. Father, I thank you so much. Thank you for your many blessings of having your angels watching over us. Now, Father, as we leave this place, let us not leave your presence. Order our steps and help us to know and sense your presence all around us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You be blessed.